Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on uh, cis loop ligand gated ion channels. Okay, so in this video we're going to take a little bit of a detour and we're going to talk about a protein that is not in humans. Instead, it's expressed in mollusks, so things like slugs and snails. Um, and basically, uh, the reason we're going to talk about this protein is because uh, this protein has a very, very similar structure to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And much of the research, much of what we know about the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, uh, we know because of research that went on in the um, what's known as the acetylcholine binding protein, which is what we're going to talk about in this uh, video. So basically, this video is an introduction to the acetylcholine binding protein, so that when I talk about it in upcoming videos, uh, where we're going to talk about uh, the uh, way in which acetylcholine binds to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, um, you'll know what it is. Because, m as I say, most of, the, um, most of these mechanisms by which acetylcholine actually binds to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, we found out by studying the acetylcholine binding protein. Okay, so we're going to have a video on this acetylcholine binding protein. And it's an interesting piece of biology, an interesting piece of neurobiology, just not terribly uh, relevant to human medicine. And it's often abbreviated to ACHBP for acetylcholine binding protein. So let me start off with the structure of this acetylcholine binding protein, and then what we'll discuss is its function, because its function is quite cool. Uh, it's quite a nice little mechanism. Right, so its structure then. Basically, it is a pentamer. It's free proteins stuck together. So I'll draw these, sorry, not free, five proteins stuck together. So here are these five proteins stuck together in a pentameric ring. And you'll notice that this is very much so like uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, where we have five um, cis loop ligand gated ion channel protein subunits stuck together to make the full nicotinic acetylcholine receptor and indeed it's very very much so like uh, that okay now this structure that we formed here this pentamer it's a homo pentamer so every single protein in this pentamer is identical to the others okay so you take the acetylcholine binding protein which is just one of these Okay, so this is an acetylcholine binding protein. You make five copies of it, and uh, you put them together in this homopentameric ring here. And this is now the acetylcholine binding protein homopentamer. And we're going to see what this is going to do. Okay, right. So I'll just circle them all in red, just to make it look more interesting. Right, okay. So... Uh, a little bit of background information. Uh, the acetylcholine binding protein subunit here, one of these, is a 229 amino acid protein. So it has 229 amino acids. If you counted the amino acids from the amino terminus all the way to the carboxyl terminus, the number you would find is 229. That's what that means. Okay. Uh, and this pentamer here binds acetylcholine. Now, basically, you I've told you that every single one of these is identical, so the thing has rotational symmetry. Now, from that, you might be able to guess where it's going to bind acetylcholine and how many acetylcholines it's going to bind. It binds them, just like nicotinic acetylcholine receptors bind them, in between two of the subunits. And because of the rotational symmetry of the thing, that means that you're going to have to have acetylcholine binding to all five of them. So all five of them are acetylcholine binding sites. So these are all binding sites for acetylcholine, which I'll denote as ACH. Okay, so ACH binding sites are here. So overall, the acetylcholine binding protein homopentamer has five acetylcholine binding sites. Okay, right. Uh, one other little piece of information 
is that these binding sites can also be antagonized by the toxin alpha bungarotoxin. So alpha bungarotoxin is a toxin that is in the venom of certain snakes. And basically, it can bind to the acetylcholine binding site on a whole bunch of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And it works well for the snake because it will bind to the acetylcholine binding sites on uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, which are on the skeletal muscle cells. Okay? It itself will not stimulate those acetylcholine receptors, but it will stop acetylcholine from being able to bind and stimulate. So, if you imagine having a skeletal muscle cell here now, so this is our skeletal muscle cell, and now all of your uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors that are on this skeletal muscle cell, which incidentally are the alpha-1, 2, beta-1, delta, epsilon type of uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, all of these will be bound to the alpha bungarotoxin, which also is often abbreviated to alpha BJ, uh, BG rather, TX. Okay, uh, all of them will have this bound to it, and when the uh, animal wants to actually move, it will need to contract muscles, so it will release acetylcholine onto the muscle via its neurons here, its alpha motor neurons. So this is a alpha motor neuron that is trying to stimulate the muscle cell to contract. However, the acetylcholine is totally pointless now because it just cannot bind to this alpha-1, 2, beta-1, delta, epsilon nicotinic acetylcholine receptor on the skeletal muscle cell. So, basically it paralyzes the um, poor animal and that works well for the snake. Okay, so, um, basically this Bungarotoxin, alpha bungarotoxin, will bind also to the acetylcholine binding sites of the acetylcholine binding protein. So it seems to have very similar binding sites to the binding sites on uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Okay, now let's talk about what the function of this acetylcholine binding protein is within the mollusks. And I should have written that down somewhere. This is found in mollusks, okay? So invertebrates, okay, things like snails. I think they originally found it in sea snails. Okay, right. So, what's its function? Well, basically, in these mollusks, you have synapses, just like we have in humans. Okay, so here is our presynaptic neuron. So this is the presynaptic neuron. Okay, and over here this is the postsynaptic neuron, okay? And some of these synapses within the mollusk will be acetylcholine synapses, synapses uh, i.e. they'll be cholinergic synapses. So, what will happen is the presynaptic neuron will release acetylcholine um, onto uh, the postsynaptic neuron, okay? So let me just draw this. Here are the acetylcholine molecules. I'll, in fact, I'll give them a colour. So these pink dots here, these represent the acetylcholine molecules being released into the synaptic cleft, this gap between the pre- and post-synaptic neuron. Okay, so these are acetylcholine, ACH molecules. Okay, and they will be acting on nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, or maybe other types of acetylcholine receptors, uh, but an example would be a nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Okay, so here's our nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, or it could be maybe a muscarinic acetylcholine receptor, which are G-protein coupled receptors to acetylcholine. But, basically, once the presynaptic neuron has released the acetylcholine onto the postsynaptic neuron, then there needs to be a way of terminating this acetylcholine signal. Okay, now, uh, the way that we have in... Uh, in vertebrates is that we have enzymes known as acetylcholinesterases which are anchored in the membrane of the presynaptic cell and face into the synaptic cleft. So shall I draw one of these? Okay, let's have it here. So here is our acetylcholinesterase enzyme. So I'll just label this as our acetylcholinesterase enzyme. And basically what it will do is it will break down the acetylcholine that's in the synaptic cleft acetylcholinesterase, 
it will break it down into acetic acid and choline, and that's not uh, active at the acetylcholine receptors. So that's the way we terminate the signal. Now, in mollusks, you still have this system of having uh, acetylcholinesterases uh, in the synaptic cleft here. Uh, but you also have another way of terminating the signal, which involves this acetylcholine binding protein. So what you have is, let's say, we'll have our glial cell here. So this is not a cell that's... Uh, it's not a neuron. Instead, it's a glial cell. Okay, so it basically um, is involved in supporting the neurons. It helps them to survive. It feeds them. It looks after their... Um, uh, their environment keeps it nice and comfortable for the neurons. And here, it's going to help terminate the acetylcholine signal. So basically, what will happen is the glial cell will have nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on its surface for the acetylcholine. Okay, so this is a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, nicotinic ACH receptor. And when acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft, what will happen is it will stimulate the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on uh, the glial cell. The nicotinic acetylcholine receptors will open and sodium ions will move into the cell to depolarize the cell membrane. Okay, so you'll get an excitatory postsynaptic potential. And this will cause the release of acetylcholine binding protein by the glial cells. So the glial cells are synthesizing these uh, homopentamers of acetylcholine binding protein, okay? And upon uh, depolarization of the cell membrane, they release the acetylcholine binding protein into the synaptic cleft. And then what happens is the acetylcholine binding protein simply binds acetylcholine. So five acetylcholine molecules are going to bind to these five acetylcholine binding sites on the acetylcholine binding protein homopentamer. Okay, and this is going to have the effect of mopping up the acetylcholine. Basically, this protein just binds acetylcholine. It doesn't do anything with it. It's, so it's just going to stop the acetylcholine from interacting with the uh, receptors on the postsynaptic neuron by binding it to itself and just mopping it up in effect. So it's like a mopping up device. It's going to uh, go in there and bind 5-acetylcholine molecules and just sequester them and stop them from being able to interact with the receptors. So that's another way of terminating the acetylcholine signal between the pre- and postsynaptic neurons, uh, which is seen in mollusks, but not in humans. There is no evidence for this existing in humans.